Uh. And look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh. Oh. Hey, what's up everyone? Now we're back here today with another video. This time, taking a look again at the Stone Cold and a couple games I've had for a little bit saved up on it. So I figured why not put them together and uh, put a bit out on it. Granted, it hasn't been that long since the last video on it. But, you know, more the merrier, I suppose. So, first game, we're actually on Abbey, our, one of our most favorite maps in the game. Lots of sarcasm there. Um in a tier 9 game which isn't the worst but obviously isn't the best and honestly we're not going to push down either of the flanks in this tank because it doesn't have the best armor um, and as a medium especially in this kind of matchup I'm going to try to push the middle um, depending on how I feel may push all the way up but I usually don't especially if I'm solo simply just because I don't get left out by myself uh, and that does happen quite frequently if you do do that playing solo uh it's just getting kind of abandoned as probably uh, many of you know uh that, that happens to everybody <laughs> you push you push and your, your teammates are nowhere to be seen kind of like this lt432 who's found out the hard way that yeah you probably shouldn't push this by yourself and we're just going to give him a nice little nudge face hug him make it a bit of a pain to try to pen me uh he does pen me and we have the waste of repair kit there um, fairly early on. We're getting shot at from the side as well by the 12T. Uh, fortunately for us, he misses pretty much all his shots, so that's always good. And now we have a very strong, strong position on Abby as we've put two more into the Super Pershing as he passes by. Now, generally the team that controls the Abby does pretty well, but we almost have too many tanks in the center at this point. Um, you probably max need two or three tanks. We have four in the Abbey, and then we have two heavy tanks that are down in this corridor below us, um, which is not ideal at, at all. Uh, that corridor is pretty much a death trap for the most part. Um, you can sit on the outside of the Abbey there, right to the left of where I'm at, and get some decent shots. But for the most part, that's certainly a part of the map I like to avoid. It's pretty much kind of a kill zone. Um, so just word otherwise I wouldn't go there too too much unless you're just kind of passing through in late game but it's very much a kill zone uh, for the most part but now we have our sights set on this IS-6 black and for the lower plate unfortunately the second one does not go off um, it's okay we should finish him off he's pretty in a pretty vulnerable spot as the light tanks approaching up behind him with the SB-1C and he should be distracted when we poke back out and sure enough he is put one into his side and slap another just right through his front of his uh, his upper plate. Uh, I think there's actually the weak spot with like the like the hatch entry hatch on the IS6. So possibly we hit that, or just you know also got a high pen roll. It's always possible. Um, <laughs> very lucky there. Type four. We only poke out part ways, partially knowing that there are probably tanks still there. Partially, but luck. Uh, it's okay to be lucky. Um, and luckily he also does not have the derp gun, so we kind of keep that in the back of our mind for later, possibly. Um, what type of, you know, shell he's using. Versus the HE, that probably would have done about 400 damage there, uh, or more. <laughs> Competing on those big, big derp guns on the Japanese heavies. And right now we can kind of see what's happening. We've lost the one flank. The other we've kind of taken, because they didn't send anything there. There we can't take an unnecessary shot from the Tiger P, but they've kind of like pushed it in and retaken the Abbey at this point with the Emil 2 uh, that has gone in there and is clipping out our medium tank right now. I see he's kind of dumping the clip and I have tanks behind me so I really have no choice but to really push in at this point um, to try to help this T20 the best I can. Hopefully at the very least that the Emil 2 has dumped some of his shots, but the T20 actually got away and now I'm faced with an Emil 2 charging at me. We're able to bounce his first one. Just going to face hug for the best. Try to bounce any shots. Wiggle the turret. We get the second bounce. And now I think he's reloading because he's not firing anymore. Um, again, this thing doesn't have great armor. But if you can kind of angle it somewhat, it's okay. Now the Emil 2 is doing the right thing. He's trying to face hug me. 
I'm trying to wiggle my way out of it so I can get the gun depression, and there we go. Had the heat rounds loaded so I can pen through his upper plate very easily, uh, more easily than usual, I suppose, of uh, the 250 heat pen on this. And now we're just getting away, and he's dipping out the other way because he's getting a shot by my teammates that went down the uh, other flank there, you can see. And now we have a whole horde swarming our heavy tank. I apparently have a hard time shooting at Conway's. And yeah, I think it's time to get out of here before the same thing that's happening to that Type 4 happens to me. And we're going to dip on out of the Abbey quite quickly here. Uh, that is the thing with it, this tank. It does have the autoloader, but it's not a like intimidating autoloader. Uh, it's very much damage over time. And this is unfortunately right into the standard B. We luckily only had one shell loaded at the time. Somehow. I don't know how. Uh, fortunate for us because otherwise he would be very easy. could very easily clip us out here. Um, with his three shots. But for some reason he does not. And we should beat his re- Well. A bit lucky he doesn't hit us. Uh, he could have killed us there if he rolled high. 360 alpha on that tank. It's feasible. And we get a lucky on the move shot into the arty to finish him off. And now we have a charging 53 TP. And the best way to kind of deal with this is hopefully he gets shot by my teammates over there, which he does. Uh, and now I'm just trying to kite him around the rock. See if we can't get in the miss. He <laughs> derps it right into the rock as planned for us. Now we have time to just dump our clip into him. That's what I mean. This auto loader, it's not particularly threatening. But if you can just rack up the the uh, the clips over time, the damage adds up pretty quickly. As you look at our damage total so far, we're already up to 5,300. Um, and that happened kind of almost in a blink of an eye. We've just been, not slowly, but just casually dumping clips over the entire course of this game. Um, and we'll see if it's going to be enough. I don't know if it is. But right now we have a Type 4 also. Uh, but they also have a full health type 4, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to go around this, because they're just swarming him right now. Uh, I, for some reason, thought the type 4 was going to stay up on the ridge line. For some reason, he is not. Uh, so that kind of sucks. If he had stayed up on the flank, the pilot would have given me a better shot at maybe having a chance to win this, win this game. But now we have to fight a couple basically full health tanks by myself. The chances of pulling this one off are pretty much slim to none, but doesn't mean we can't give it our best shot um, and see if we, what can we can really get out of this game. And rather than just charging right in there on 400 health and just trying to get a clip off, I'm going to wait. And now this is going to be a boring part of the gameplay. Um, what I'm waiting for here is for hopefully them to split up and maybe disperse around the map. Uh, just like Scooby-Doo or something. They're going to split up and try to find the bad guy. And the bad guy is just going to try to hide in his little corner and hope they don't come up into the abbey. I'm hoping at least one of them goes into the cap circle on my my side. Because then I have a pretty good faith that I can outspot them from this middle position. Uh, minus maybe the batch head AP. That's the only one I don't think I couldn't outspot, depending on his crew. And sure enough, my clockwork, one of them goes in the cap... We're going to poke out. Nobody's gone into the center. And let's see if who's in the cap. Poking forward. There we go. We get the spot on the Conway. We back up a little bit. See if we can get out of his rear range. Get behind these bushes. Play smart. Aim it in. Dump two. And this is where penning those two shots that we missed earlier on the Conway would have been so nice. Because that guy right now would be dead. He'd be gone. And right now, we shouldn't really be aiming at him, because uh, it's just telling him that we're still looking. And unfortunately, we put one in, we aren't able to pick up the second one there. So, kind of a, a couple missed shots coming back to bite us there in the end. But our plan kind of works out pretty well. But now, obviously, they know right where we're at, because I got it spotted. And there's the type... No, that's actually the Black Prince, sorry. Uh, the Type 4 is off to my right. Put one to the Black Prince. We put another into him. He's burning. He's on fire. And right now, at this point, we're sitting at 7k damage, which is a stellar result. I mean, that's just fantastic in a tier 8 tank. It just goes to show how well, uh, how good this thing is. If you can just dump the clips slowly but surely over the course. But 
this guy right here it's pretty much like there's just no way um there's no way we're gonna be able to deal with him the conway appears out of thin air well not so much thin air i think he missed somehow i don't know how Jax is up on our side i don't know if we're gonna be able to reload again somehow we are we kill the conway try to get out of here before they batch at ap but unfortunately he does take us out that game could have maybe went differently if two things, a couple of things went more our way. Uh, we took some better shots at the Conway earlier, but nonetheless, we actually lose that game with, you can see a great performance from the team. Uh, oh, well, it happens. Uh, so it's okay. It's still a good match, uh, good game on a really bad map for mediums. Honestly, Abby is not ideal. Um, and yeah, just trying to make the most of a game that seemed lost. And we picked up about 2k extra damage at the end of that game when we were what one versus four versus basically you think, okay, maybe we'll get one more clip off. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, if you just keep kind of repositioning and thinking about it, it's always why I try to just give my best, even when those scenarios seem pretty hopeless. Uh, cause I've almost pulled off some ridiculous games. Uh, truthfully, by just going full, I guess, try hard. <laughs> but just overall, pretty good game uh, in the Stone Cold. And now we're going to jump into the second one, already underway with my little bit laggy in the beginning, but there it goes, it smooths out. It's just the capture card doing capture card things. And I was going to say we're platoon with Petty, but we're actually platoon with Alex, uh, another of the various Brits I uh, platoon with, because, you know. I don't actually play with anybody from the U.S. <laughs> don't know why. Uh, kidding. And we're on a map that's a lot better for our tanks. Uh, he's in a Centurion 5-1. Kind of similar. Uh, Ridgeline Warrior. And we're still in the Stone Cold, obviously. Uh, and we're on Thiefel Ridge, which is a map that's much more open and much, much more suited uh, to these style of tanks. With the mediums that have the gun depression. Uh, and decent mobility, but we're really honestly not going to make much use of the mobility in this game. Uh, this position where we're at right now, it's where we're going to do most of our work, and that's completely fair as we put one into the AT-15 and put our second in. I really enjoy the 280 Alpha on this tank. Um, I said I think I did that like initial review of this thing on the channel. Um, it just feels unique, and I like that about tanks. Uh, I hate playing the same cookie cutter tanks like all the time it's like wow you have 390 alpha on a tier 10 medium you're so special um or the various centurion one variants like alpha, uh, alex is playing they're good tanks don't get me wrong but personally i can find them a little dull to play at times um uh, and kind of repetitive which is maybe why eh, i don't see much you don't see much of them on the channel at least per uh, <laughs> at the moment and right now we're just kind of waiting for some spots we know we're pushing this side pretty heavily we know they're pushing the other side pretty heavily put one into the borsig and put one into the waffen dragger uh, not the greatest roll so far if i'm at all honest i think all our rolls have been around 250 it's not fantastic um but that's okay and at this point it's tempting just to push straight up but i have shots on these guys so i don't know why i would uh, if you have shots like this, I'm just going to take them. Uh, wh why move? At least at this point. Um, that can bite you. And it can be tempting to just sit in position. And there are times where you do want to move. Um, I've lost games. I've seen other people lose games where they sit in one spot and just try to farm. When in reality they're losing map control. And right now it kind of looks like we are. We still have two... TDs on that side, so I'm kind of still okay with sitting here because I'm kind of trying to supporting them in the same way. Uh, I'm not really helping the giant push. They have plenty of support off to my right. I know Alex is on low health now, uh, but that's kind of he's leading that charge, so that's kind of the why I would imagine he's a little low on health. And at this point, I'm definitely getting looked at by their team over there. I'm just trying to set up a crossfire. Uh, try to help those TDs, even though I'm on the other side of the map out, uh, as much as I can. Uh, regardless of where I'm at on the map physically, I can still see over there and provide some long range 
uh, fire over to them. I'm not trying to sound too overly tactical. As the four five, <laughs> as the four V guy was shooting at tribes off a cliff. I've seen that numerous times on this map. They put like warning signs up around the uh, the river beds on people Ridge. Honestly, and I never get T29 to look at. Put one into him. Second one doesn't quite come off there. And while I'm actually still using the same position, the same kind of hill area, I'm kind of switching around it if you can kind of follow, obviously. Uh, we started by looking out to my right, looking towards the hill. Now I'm kind of using their side of the hill, looking for a thin shot on the Chief and T95. We do track him, but the likelihood of us actually pending that shot is pretty much none. Uh, we only really had the outer drive wheel, so that's really not going to pen the actual tank. It's just going to take the tracks off, but that's okay. Slowly mobilizes him. And maybe somebody does have a line of sight that can do damage. And now we're just poking up again. See the Wraith. Put one in. Second one actually does pen all the wonderful spaced armor tanks in this game right now. Uh, it's one of the first ones. But we've just been kind of rotating around this area. Just kind of whatever tanks pop up we're going to be okay and just dump a clip. I, I just like the flexibility of this thing. Um, just... It's enough to make tanks very killable if they're on 400, 500 health. And you can pick up a good amount of kills in this thing, actually. But so far, we haven't really been killing a lot. Um, so if you're probably looking for a tank for kill ops, this is probably a good one. As you put one into the bu uh, bulldog rushing over. And right now we have another heavy that has popped up. Or oh, that's the wraith, my bad. And he's going to go up and over. And yeah, bud, you, you done messed up. Uh, <laughs> got a little excited there. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. And at this point, this game is pretty handily in the bag. I said, I haven't moved that much in this game. Uh, I've been on this one hill this entire time, but everything's just kind of flowing around us, so why move? And I don't know if I've been a full clip this game, it feels like. Uh, at least from the start of the initial uh, fight on this map, so it's okay. Still sitting at a very nice 3300 damage. I feel like you can really rack up damage in this thing super, super quick. If you put one to T20, put a second, set him on fire. And now I'm just trying to think I can ram him for some reason. But T20 is actually faster than I remember, so I don't actually have the speed. Which is surprising, because I just set him on fire, and I would think his engine's dead. As we're able to bait a shot into my side. We reload, take him out, and now we have the Ag Tiger right to my left put one into him and just really a little bit and try to help this SU-122-44 out uh, as he gets clobbered by, clobbered by the Yag Tiger, but he's able to maneuver around him and then we just drive right into the drive wheel of the Yag Tiger, basically pinning him into position and then we actually pin him in position and get a nice little fire to finish that game out. So playing Ring Around the Rosie on our little hill, declaring this I'm king of this hill and racking up a nice 5,000 damage from essentially one, one position, but just rotating around it the entire time. Again, that can have negative impacts if you do just sit in one spot, but at the same time, you can also have some good results. Um, it's just kind of recognizing when and where to do which one, uh, which is not something I can immediately tell you how to do, just something that comes with experience, I guess, playing the game. So we picked up 2k base, 2 kills, 5100 damage, and about 1400 assisted there for a very, very nice result and the victory that game in the Stone Cold. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you next time. See ya. Peace.